Hi, I'm Jackie. And I'm Richard. And we're early retirement wonderlust. And we're in the French Alps, just trying to work out whether it is possible to ski out of a VW Transport or camper van. It's a Monday morning and we're not going to work. We're in the French Alps and we're in our van and it's absolutely freezing in here. As you know, we've just had a week skiing with the kids up in a lovely luxury apartment and it's been fantastic. And we thought that we'd pop down and camp out in the valley and see whether it was possible to stay in our camper van and ski at the same time. We had a great day yesterday scoping everything out. It snowed loads. There's no snow down at valley level, but it's absolutely freezing at the moment. So we thought we'd take you through what our day was going to be like in a campsite, heading off for skiing, seeing what it's like and seeing if it works or not. So we've adapted pretty well to winter van life already. Uh, morning routine is uh, get the kettle on as soon as possible because it warms the van up. Jackie stays under the duvet. She's just over there. <laughs> um, get a coffee on the go. Um, and then get dressed pretty damn quick. I'll go and get the bread, we'll make the sandwiches, we'll get our ski kit and we'll set off and hopefully within the next hour or so we'll be up skiing. Hi. So we've had two really good days skiing up in the mountains. Um, we went up yesterday morning and all of this valley was really green. And when we came back yesterday afternoon, we'd already had about three or four inches of snow and it hasn't stopped since. We feel like we're a little <laughs> bit snowed in. Um, we knew that we weren't going to get skiing today um, because the mountains and the high mountains um, are really struggling to get open with this amount of snow. But uh, we've never predicted this in the valley and we're a little bit snow stuck at the moment. <laughs> I don't see it as snow stuck, I love the snow. So we've had a bit of a chance to think about all the um, good and well, the positive things about camping down in the valley and going up skiing. First thing we thought about was the transfers. We've only ever done ski in, ski out, which is basically skiing to your front door um, and skiing from your front door at the start of the day. And obviously you can't do that down in the valley. But it's actually been really good. The campsite's got a free minibus that runs um, every half an hour for the first couple of hours of the day and then the same at, when you finish skiing. And it works really well, takes you to the funicular. So we set off, we timed ourselves yesterday. How sad's that? We set off at <laughs> nine o'clock in the morning, got the nine o'clock minibus from the campsite and we were on the first slopes at half nine. Um, the funicular works really, really well and I never thought it would do, 
I thought that we'd have loads of cues and loads of weights, but it's just a dead quick, easy way of getting up the mountain. Yeah, it might be a bit different in the middle of the peak weeks, Christmas and Feb half term, but it, was, it worked really well. So another thing that we were really anxious about was where do we store all our kit when we're camping? Um, when you get an apartment, you've always got somewhere to put your, your stuff to dry out and camping's no different. The, uh, the Hootopia site's got an amazing boot room. Jackie loves it. <laughs> I do, it's really, really nice and warm. Uh, yeah, my main worry was where would we actually store the expensive kit that we've hired? And the, it, the boot room is a shared one, so there's probably 40, 50 pairs of skis and boots in there. So it feels safe, it feels like... No one's going to pinch your equipment. And you've got the luxury of putting on warm boots in the morning, which <laughs> Ooh, is yes. amazing. Boot heaters, top. And also in the boot room, it's got drying racks. So like today, if you get really wet up on the mountains, you can leave your ski gear in there to get dried out, particularly for us in a T6, which is tiny. One of the advantages of coming to this particular campsite is that they've got a bit of an offer on with the lift pass. So you don't have to go to the lift pass office. Um, they get you 10% off the, the lift pass price. So we just purchased a couple of days here because uh, we've already had a week skiing just to test it out and it worked like an absolute dream. Yeah, and it worked out at £186 for the two of us for two days, which sounds expensive, but actually it's really good value. So as well as the free shuttle bus that runs from the campsite every morning and afternoon, um, yesterday we came back earlier than we expected because it was so heavy snow up at the top. And we were really lucky. There is also um, a free shuttle bus service that runs within Borg San Maurice, and there was a bus that dropped us straight outside the campsite. Um, no worries at all. So one of the biggest concerns that we probably had, and most people who were potentially coming skiing in a camper van is how to stay warm. It's been fab actually. The um, T6 is tiny so it doesn't take lot. We just put the heater on for 10 minutes and we're toasty again. If we cook or put a pot of, pot of um, coffee on it gets really warm and actually at night it's not been bad has it? No we uh, I, I think we are really lucky in that our T6 is really well insulated and um, probably the only things that we've had made different is we've brought um, an extra blanket with us for on top of the duvet um, and we perhaps use the heater just a little bit more than we would do in the UK, but it's been fine, we've been really warm. And then one of the other concerns about warmth is if you've ever been to a European campsite in the summer, is that you'll know that the facilities, so the toilets and the showers, can be pretty sparse. We didn't really have much to worry about here. No, the um, shower block uh, is superbly heated. They've got air blowers that go into each of the shower cubicles uh, to keep you nice and toasty warm when you're showering. The, there's washing up facilities in there, so it's actually easier just to go and do the washing up in the shower block. Uh, yeah, it's been pretty good so far. One of the bonuses of when we arrived is that the place has got a community room uh, next to the reception. It's got a log fire in it, it's got sofas, it's got picnic tables, it's got free tea and coffee in there. And for us, being in the T6, which is so tiny, it's been a bit of a godsend that if we do feel a bit cooped up, we can just go and sit in there. We've gone up and taken our glasses of wine. Anyone who owns a camper van will naturally be obsessed with batteries and power and how all of that works. And particularly in the, this, the cold snap that we're in at the moment. We've got electric hookup as part of our 26 euro a night price and it just takes all of that worry away. We don't normally use electric hookup um, throughout the year, but in winter it's absolutely essential. It means that we can have as many lights on as we want. It means that we can run the fridge and the heater without any problem at all and without worrying about our battery levels. So it's a major point in terms of winter camping. Yeah, because the solar power was not going to be working this week. The staff on the campsite are really friendly. Um, we've had a few different inquiries of where to go for different things. Uh, and every time we've been in, their English is superb, much to our uh, disgust that we can't converse in French with them. But yeah, they've been really helpful whatever we've needed they've sorted us out. One of the surprises of coming away in winter was a the number of full-time motorhomers that are out out here and out here for the season but b how many Brits are out here and um, there's a real little community spirit on the campsite. Yeah they seem to be a group of people that must come nearly every year and time it so they're all here together um, and yeah there's a, there's a really nice feeling and they're really friendly which normally we're quite shy and reclusive on campsites so it's been quite nice to just have a chat in the mornings to different people. A huge advantage of this campsite is it is a town centre campsite and it is right opposite two massive supermarkets so you've got choices of where to go for food. A lot of the full-time motorhomers that are here for the season don't particularly move their vans at all because whatever they need is within walking distance. 
My big worry about coming to stay in the valley and go skiing is that we're very much used to ski in, ski out holidays where we'll have a chalet and you can go straight down from the slopes and be in the chalet two seconds later. But it's actually worked out really well. Yeah, they, they're really well organised and I'd have never believed how smooth it has run for us to be able to get from valley level right up to the top of the mountain in really short time. And it's it's a compromise that is is in my mind, worth taking. My big disadvantage, um, but this is winter camping in general, even in the UK, is obviously we're in a small T6. It doesn't have any onboard facilities like toilets and showers. Um, so having to go for my three o'clock wee, it can be a bit cold, particularly when we've got over a foot of snow in the valley now. So yeah, I'm having to get fully dressed up. <laughs> but it's not something that has been too much of an inconvenience. Yeah. It's just, we, we're a short walk from the toilet block and it's just worked fine. And actually it's quite fun. <laughs> Another concern that we had was when we get back to the van, as you can see now, our coats are quite wet, particularly down in the valley. Um, and I was worried about having to have wet clothes hanging around the van all of the time. But the boot room actually has drying racks for all your ski clothes. Yeah, and we haven't got a massive amount of space in the van and we've had to be really organised and we've got certain bags for certain things. But the fact that you can actually an hour later go back up to the boot room, get your stuff that's dry and then pack it away is uh, is made yeah. it very, very easy. Richard had fun yesterday. We needed to make tea. Uh, we needed some water to boil for the pasta. Yeah, and we, <laughs> we made a conscious decision. We've got onboard water tanks that are underneath the van um, and we took all the advice of not to use those in winter because they just freeze up and they can cause... Uh, cracks and damages to your pipe work inside the van so we have just gone with a water container obviously in these conditions the water <laughs> container freezes so it's a bit of a challenge um, but being on a campsite you can always go to um, the toilet and wash up block and actually get fresh water from there so it is a challenge it is something you have to think about because yeah. oi does it freeze? <laughs> the yesterday was really funny when we were trying to cook because even the olive oil inside the van had frozen. I took the lid off and I could tip it upside down. Happy days. <laughs> oh, our final concern is tomorrow morning when we need to leave the campsite. I can't believe how much <laughs> snow's actually landed. We drove onto a green campsite and now we, we're getting well over a foot of snow on the campsite. Um, we're going to have to dig ourselves out. Um, we've got snow chains, but I think we're going to need snow chains to get off the campsite because the snow's that deep. Um, the main roads we thought earlier on this morning were looking pretty good, but then more snow's come and I'm not particularly looking forward to driving on it, but it is a challenge. And, you know, if you come on holiday to Alpine regions, then you've got to be prepared for that. Um, We've got a little bit of wiggle room because we don't have to be on the ferry till Sunday and it's Wednesday morning tomorrow. So we could stay another day and it's due to be a lot lighter, but then it's also due to be colder. So there's a, a toss up between icy roads or snowy roads. So hopefully that's us. <laughs> the pros, the cons of camper van life in a ski resort. It's worked really well for us. Would you do it again? Absolutely. Yeah. And already my mind's ticking over as to how we can use the cheaper costs to actually stay out here longer next year. Uh -huh.